So I'm in the Akai AX90 and I'm troubleshooting why there's no control voltage signals getting to the voice chips. So there's a series of 4151 chips. Those, those chips are um, they're electronic switches. They have eight selectable outputs. They have three uh, binary signals coming in which taken together form a three-bit value which is got eight possible values so each combination of off and on binary signals selects one of the eight outputs okay and then there is an input channel the input channel simply gets routed to one of these selected outputs so if we look at what these chips are receiving right now on the input we'll see these binary signals. That's pulsing along because I have a MIDI signal uh, sending an arpeggiator to it. You can ignore all that other little squirrely stuff that was going on there. That was just my hand slipping with the oscilloscope probe. So those are the signals coming in. Okay. Now what I've been looking at is, you know, well, signals going out. These are the outputs. They're never getting anything coming through them. So, you know, you got two possibilities. You could have a bad a bad chip, right? That's of course one of the possibilities. That was all the outputs on one of these chips. Um, I've checked them all. In fact, all of the 4051s are responding exactly the same. They're all getting their three bit channel selector signals as they should and it responds to things like um, changes in the the speed of the MIDI uh, arpeggio that's going in so I can you know just change the rate and watch the signal pulsing change which is kind of cool right you can confirm you know what's going on like I'm turning it up right now I'm speeding it up with my hand as I turn the knob and there you go now we're at a much higher uh, MIDI pulse rate so they all work the same. They are all getting their inhibit signals, which I believe the inhibit signal is essentially used to turn everything off just for a second, or well, not a second, but turn everything off so you can switch cleanly to another channel uh, so that you don't have the, the signal that's coming in being inadvertently sent uh, you know, to two outputs at the same time while things are kind of switching over. So I thought, well, if I'm getting no outputs, maybe there's an input problem. So pin three is the input. This is an analog input. There's nothing there. This is another pin three. Absolutely nothing. Another pin three. This is supposed to be sending the frequency control voltage, by the way. Nothing there. So no frequency control voltage. The VCO in the... Uh, Voice chip never gets anything. It never gets a filter value, a resonance value, uh, a waveform selector value, nothing. So this is where the analog and digital collide, right? So this, this chip gets digital signals from the CPU board over here sends them to the analog voice board, these 4051s get both the digital signal for selecting the channels and they get the analog signal. So no analog signal. I need to look up now where is that analog signal coming from that tells the voice chips what their control values are. So I know I've got you know, various computer processor chips here. And right there is a digital to analog converter. I also know that the, uh, the microprocessor itself, I mean, there's several processors in here. Um, some of them have, uh, they, they certainly respond or can generate analog as well as digital signals. But I've got to do a little more homework on those to figure out exactly 
which one is sending the signals here. Um, there's a possibility. I would love this to happen. It's a possibility that it's just one of these wires being pulled loose from a jack. So we'll be checking both ends of these boards for presence of the signals once I figure out what generates them.